We have not one but two Poker Hall of Famers at the top of the show, and they are squaring off in high stakes duel two. Daniel Negreanu and Phil Hellmuth join us right now. And gentlemen, this belt in front of us will be on the line soon. Phil, we will start with you as you are the reigning, defending, undisputed champion. Fill us in on the details of High Stakes Duel 2. Go ahead and make our official announcement. Okay, uh, March 16th is when it's going to be, and I think it's at 8 Eastern, am I right? That's right. 5 p.m. out here on the West Coast. My question, though, to Daniel, I have a question right off the top. Hey, Daniel, you said I'm a two and a half to one underdog. I, the last time I played Antonio, he'd been taunting me for years, and he said, oh boy, I'm 65% favorite, 60% favorite. Three matches later, he had zero wins, I had three wins. Well, why, why am I a two and a half to one underdog, Daniel? Actually, the betting line is minus 164, plus 149. That's not, that's I, not I, what you said. What you said on. is two and a half to one. What I said was, yeah, but let me finish my statement. You talked, and now it's my turn to talk, right? Isn't that how it works? I said I believe that I'm between two and two and a half to one favorite in this match. Okay, that's what I believe. But that doesn't mean that that's the betting line. And I'm go I already have bet a significant amount of money at, at minus 150. Now, if this was a 25,000 hand match similar to the one I just played, obviously two to one would be, um, you know, well within reason in terms of a betting line. But uh, for now, I mean, if I'm uh, getting one fifty, huh? Yeah. Why would I take? Why would I lay two and a half when I can lay one and a half? So I asked you why am I why why am I a two and a, why am I a two to one underdog in your opinion? Oh, in, opinion. in my opinion. Oh, okay, great. So first and foremost, I want to say that I think you're great at heads up poker. I really do, and I think that a lot of the things you do against the players that you played against, specifically Antonio, actually destroys them. Like the way you played Antonio in those three matches, like he talked about bad luck and all that kind of stuff. But the reason that you won all three of those matches was because he made poor decisions. His strategy was flawed. He wasn't balanced enough. He was just doing a lot of things that you were exploiting. And you have been, for three decades now, probably the best exploitative player of all time, right? You, there's nobody that's done it to the extreme that you do. Because like you've said before, you play a style nobody plays. Nobody at all plays. And a lot of the time when you face off against a GTO player, they approach you like a normal human being. But they forget that they're playing Phil Helmy, right? So what seems GTO or what seems like an okay decision is probably okay, but it's not ideal and best suited for when you're playing against Phil Hellmuth. I'm uniquely suited in having an understanding of that stuff, but also, you know, I'm willing to go down the sh in the streets with you and play exploitative where, you know, they don't do it quite the same. So what do you okay, think about that so, so, uh, so let me just ask you, let me guess, give me another second. So, so apparently I'm great at heads up. I've won whatever, 18 out of 20 matches in the real world or whatever it's been. I beat Jungle Man, who they said was the best. I beat Doug Polk, who they said they was the best. I had a street fight with Antonio. I, I won three matches there. So you say I'm great at heads up, which implies you're like greater or the greatest? No, no. I think I would get destroyed by really good players, right? like the top, top players in the world. Like, not us, because we're not that. Like, there are guys that are way better than us at this format, specifically. What I'm saying is, I think for you... I disagree 100% of... with that, but I'm talking about, like, oh. you calling me great. Yeah. You're saying well, you're I'm greater. Saying, like, I think there... I was just about to say that, but you know, you keep cutting me off. So, what I was going to say was, I think I'm uniquely suited, as well as... Fe Maybe Fedor Helps probably even better suited, because when Fedor plays against you, he actually destroyed you pretty badly in every street. So, for me... I feel like I'm a bad matchup for you, specifically just for you, like a bad matchup because of, you know, what I'll be willing to do against you or some of the guys who play with the theory based, you know, strategy would not. But again, if we played against, you know, the actual top guys who do this every day and, you know, day out, I don't think I'm on their level. But in sit and goes, you know, it's a, it's a level of the playing field. Anybody can win a sit and go as long as you're not completely terrible. So, uh, so you kind of dodged the question a little bit. So, I mean, like, it feels like <laughs> I'm great, but you're greater is what I'm hearing. No, 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 no. You got, you see, here's what you're missing. There's matchups, right? Like one team, let's say the Vegas Golden Knights. The Vegas Golden Knights are way better than Minnesota Wild, right? Generally speaking, Minnesota beats them every time for some reason, because it's a bad matchup for Vegas. Is Vegas better than Minnesota? I'm of confused. Course. I thought you called cool. me great at heads up. I did. I said you are so great. you're greater. That heads up. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. That's, first of all, not what I said. I Listen, 
What I'm saying is specifically the matchup for you. I'm so a bad I'm great, matchup. But you're a but you're a bad matchup for me is what you're saying. I say I'm saying yes that I, you're a great player, and I've said that before, and I've said it again, and I think some of the players you've played against in the past came in with an inferior strategy against you because they were not willing to do the things that are required to have a big advantage over you. So what happened when I beat Doug Polk and Jungle Man and, and, and you and everybody Perfect said, example. hey, they're the number one. Let me finish. They're the number one and two heads up players in the world. I beat them Who's both the back to back. And then then what happened? Was there any praise for me? I mean, those guys are playing GTO, right? I, I guess here's I got thing, lucky Bill, or something. Here's, the thing, Bill, is here's what you do, right? You take a sit and go which is a one leg thing. Obviously you've done really well in this format, but you, you neglect the idea that like, first of all, A, as I said, they're not making the adjustments they should against you. And B, there's a lot of luck in these little things. This isn't like you playing 25,000 hands of heads up poker. Like, you know, I think you know deep in your heart that like if you played a 25,000 hand match against somebody cash game under big blinds deep, you're gonna get smoked pretty bad. But these formats, you're good at them. You're very good at these formats. And you're better than those guys in those formats, I think. I think that they didn't make the adjustments to uh, to play. So the last people. 18 out of 20 players, where I can name 18 tough players that I played that I beat out of 20, uh, so I was just I was just lucky. I didn't so say that. That's what Antonio said. You guys are going to debate over luck. I'm saying this. If you sit down with Jason Kuhn or Stephen Chin, Antonio Chimler, didn't he, say that. Antonio felt I was lucky in a spot or two. But if you talk to him now, it'll be like, he, played, he underestimated if, if you, me. Um, if you sit down with Jason Kuhn, Stephen Chidwick, Peter Fader Holtz, and you play 10 of these matches, right? You're not going to win six. You're not. You're going to win a I couple. I think I will. I, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't think there's a universe in the world where your strategy is going to match up over the long run, over short sample sizes, over one, before people make the adjustments or understand how to play against you. Then I think you do really well. But in the long run, you take, you take exploitation to such an extreme that – you know, once people figure it out, they're like, oh, duh. You know, this is how you beat the guy. Hey, everyone. This is No Gamble, No Future. All the sports betting and Brent, really just all the pure degeneracy. You got to risk it to get the biscuit. Mm. Like and subscribe. Please.